This is Physics 142 online again, and I would like to finish up our discussion of standing waves by switching from standing waves on a string to standing waves in air columns. And a lot of what we're going to talk about will apply directly to simple notions of musical instruments. In other words, the woodwind instruments. The most important thing to understand is how the traveling wave happens and then what the boundary conditions are at the ends of the tube or the pipe that contains the air. And in the example that we're showing here, you can see that the incoming traveling wave, perhaps excited by someone blowing across the left end of the tube, which is open, is moving from left to right. That traveling wave then will reflect off of the closed end of the tube and come back in the direction that it came from. And those two traveling waves being equal and in opposite directions will, by the superposition principle, add up to form a net wave, and that net wave will be a standing wave. The red arrows represent the direction of the oscillations of the air molecules. Remember that sound is a longitudinal wave due to a compression of air molecules. And so the sound wave is composed of air molecules oscillating to the left and to the right. However, when I'm going to draw pictures that show the displacements of the air molecules, in order to show them clearly, I'm going to pretend that for the purpose of my diagrams, that sound waves are like waves on a string. And you'll see what I mean in just a minute. So, we can set up standing waves in air pipes in much the same way that we can set up standing waves on a string. We just have to send one wave in, and the wave that's reflected off the other end combines to form a standing wave. The point is, however, that for a particular pipe, whether it's open at one end and closed at the other, or whether it might be open at both ends, only certain very special frequencies can form standing waves. So, the boundary conditions are essential in order to understand the pictures that are going to follow. At the left-hand end, at A, that's the open end of the tube. And that's where the air that's inside the tube joins up with the air outside the tube and is completely free to move. There's no constraint on the motion of the air molecules at the open end. So that becomes an antinode. By contrast, at the right-hand end, or in any closed end to an air pipe, the air molecules at that end are stuck. They can't move to the right. And so any motion of air molecules at that point has to cease. And so that will be, at point B, a node. The air in the pipe simply can't move at all. So what does this mean? Well, let's look at the simple case, different from what I showed in the previous slide, where both ends of the pipe are open. So this might be like a straw. And if you excite a wave to travel through that pipe, it may seem unusual, but part of the wave that travels, let's say, from left to right can actually be reflected off of the open end, and part of it can come back. And a standing wave will be set up in that case. But remember, the boundary conditions for a pipe like this show that you have to have an antinode at each end. The open ends are antinodes. And in this case, we see that both ends have the same boundary condition. That's exactly what we found for a string that's fixed at both ends. In the case of the string, the endpoints were nodes. In the case of a pipe or a tube open at both ends, the ends are antinodes, but they're the same. And the simplest kind of wave pattern that we can form, again, assuming that sound, wave, uh, sound waves can be drawn as if they were waves on a string, shows the maximum displacement at one end and a maximum displacement at the other end. The only way that can happen is if the two antinodes on the ends have a node halfway in between. And so this shows the fundamental frequency, or the first harmonic frequency, of a tube open at both ends. It's very easy for us to figure out the relationship between the frequency and the length of the pipe because if you look at the sketch carefully, the length of the pipe 
is exactly half a wavelength. So the wavelength will be twice the length of the pipe. Frequency is velocity over wavelength. So since the wavelength is twice the length of the pipe, that's the expression for the first harmonic frequency. And we can summarize, without going to the trouble to draw the pictures, we can summarize the second harmonic and the third harmonic by recalling the same relationships that we found for oh, standing waves on a string. And so the results are the same, even though the phenomenon's a little bit different. Since the boundary conditions are the same at both ends, we get the same series of harmonic frequencies. This could continue, of course, to higher harmonics. Let's now, though, look at the more interesting case, because it's different, of a pipe open at one end, open at the right end, and closed at the left end. So remember, we know the boundary conditions are such that at a closed end we have a node, no displacement of air molecules. At the open end, we have an anti-node, maximum displacement of air molecules. And if we want to figure out the wavelength in this case, we have to be a little careful. The length of the pipe now is the difference from a node, between a node and an anti-node. And if I just sketch out a complete sine wave, I'll see that the difference, the distance between a node and an anti-node is one quarter of the wavelength. So L is one quarter of the wavelength, which means the wavelength is four times L. That's a different relationship than we found for the pipe that was open at both ends. So since wavelength is 4L, speed is V, and that's going to be, in this case, the speed of sound. So usually there'll just be a number provided for that. The frequency is given by the familiar relation V equals frequency times wavelength. So here V is this first frequency times the wavelength, 4L, and we solve for the frequency and see that it's 4 divided, I'm sorry, V divided by 4L. This now looks a little different than the first harmonic frequency for the pipe that was open at both ends. So slightly different values. It's actually one half of that value. So pipes that are opened at one end will sound different than pipes that are opened at both ends. We can see what happens for the next higher uh, harmonic by showing now another wave pattern that we could draw, once again consistent with having a node at the left-hand end and an anti-node at the open end, at the right. We're introducing another node, and therefore we have to go through another anti-node as well. So this is the next kind of standing wave pattern that we could draw. And carefully here we see that really the pipe itself is divided into three equal segments. Anti-node to node to anti-node to node. So there are three equal segments in this pipe. What does that mean about the wavelength? It means that the length of the pipe is equal to three quarters of a wavelength. Right? From here, from node to node is half a wavelength. From node to anti-node is a quarter of a wavelength. So the length is three quarters of the wavelength. If we then solve for the wavelength, that's easy enough to do, and that shows that it's four times the length over three. So now it's a simple matter to once again solve for the frequency. And in this case, you'll see why we're writing it F3. You might wonder why I didn't call this the second harmonic, and that's because of the result. If we look at the result for this frequency, it's 3V over 4L. Take a look at that. Let me go back for just a minute to the previous slide, okay? Because here was the slide for the case where we had the same pipe, but the lowest frequency, what we call the first harmonic, V over 4L, right? The next pattern on this slide gave a result of 3V over 4L, so it's three times F1. And by the very definition, we have to call that the third harmonic. The next pattern that we draw would mean that we would get the fifth harmonic. And the very interesting thing about pipes that are open at one end and closed at another end is that you only get the odd harmonics. Frequencies that would have been even harmonics if the tube had been open at both end, ends simply do not exist for this kind of a tube. 
So this gives people who make musical instruments another variable to use in crafting air columns and pipes that give unique kinds of tones. We'll take this information and put it to use in some examples in class. I'll see you then.